know, that right. amount of growth that we had at that time was, mm -hmm. was pretty unnatural. So I'm seeing it go back towards where it was like 2018, 2019, where we have a good amount of projects, but not this overabundance of, mm -hmm. of work um, yeah. that gets greenlit and greenlit. And mm -hmm. I think we just have to kind of weather this storm a little bit longer before it gets back to kind of normal-ish mm -hmm. levels. And by normal, I mean like 2018, 2019. I don't think mm -hmm. 2020 and 2021 mm -hmm. was normal. I think that was pretty abnormal. Mm -hmm. And and then of course, like at the same time, we have this um like popping up of, of new technology with AI mm -hmm. and and that caused a lot of fear as well. And yeah. and understandably so as well. I I don't quite see it where a lot of other people see it. Yeah, first of all, thank you for for giving me some of your time and coming on the website on on the podcast um i, I have you on just because i i value your opinion and i think you're you're very um no bs about stuff and i, I value it so um, and i know this is usually not not your 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 place to be like you're always busy and like working and and or like supervising work so this is not your your realm so but thank you so much <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank so you for having me yeah no thank you for having me i've always yeah. wanted to to do one of these i find it funny uh, that yeah. you that you said i'm like a no bs person i feel like no, i'm no. suddenly i've become known on linkedin <laughs> for, for not mincing my words <laughs> no 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 it's great because i think it's great um it's great to have the like the real um what do you call it um truth about people's opinions of, of the industry yeah. just for like, people that are not in as well as people that are in, are in as well so yeah for um, sure yeah but I mean I just wanted to just have a general under, um discussion with you and just basically just see what you think about where we are at as a as an industry in 2024 yeah. and just like what's going on really yeah cool yeah yeah. So yeah. What do you? Yeah. What's what's happening? What do you think? <laughs> what are what, what are your thoughts and on, on uh, where we we are at and what happened and what's what's going on? Yeah, really. I think I think the industry is is in a is in a pretty tough place right now. I think everyone kind of feels it and and knows it. I'm super fortunate that I've been working throughout the strikes, um, and and I'm still working, and and that's I'm really really grateful for that mm -hmm. for sure. So I think otherwise, you know, it, it's like, I can't imagine how difficult the situation is for a lot of people right now. Yeah. But, um, I think, I think actually like our, our industry is, um, the way I see it, I think a couple of things happened and happened relatively simultaneously. I think, um, the pandemic in 2020 kind of launched a false sort of, Hey, everyone wants to watch TV and movies all the time. Kind of similar how it happened in games as well, where there was a false assumption that everyone now plays games all the time. Like there's a, of course, like a market for all of these things, mm -hmm. but I think just because we were home for a while, mm, studios and, and upper management, etc., kind of falsely assumed that this upward trajectory of consumption will just keep going and going. And I think there was a lot of projects that were greenlit that I think in previous times before the pandemic would not necessarily have sure. gotten greenlit. Mm -hmm. And so not only were they greenlit, but they were also kind of greenlit at this accelerated pace where it was like, now, 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 like, we have to have this now, we have to have mm -hmm. this in two months, this is in six months, because we got to keep going. I think, I think it was also at the end of 2019 that Disney Plus launched. So I think right, they yeah. also needed a bunch of things yeah, just sure. for their platform to compete yeah. with the rest. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what we saw in our industry was suddenly a spike in so many jobs. There were so many jobs, like you could pick where you wanted to right. go um in like the end of 2020 and then for sure 2021 was mm -hmm. a really strong year i think for our industry because there was so so much work 
um, and 2022 too. But mm -hmm. um, but I think that was actually pretty unnatural. And so I think what happened when the when the strikes hit last year, um, obviously that stopped everything for us, yeah. and 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 everyone got hit really yeah. really hard. And I think when the strikes ended, the assumption was kind of like, well, Hollywood is gonna like bounce back, jump, yeah. bounce back, jump back mm -hmm. on 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 production right away, ramp yeah. production up right away, mm -hmm. and then that kind of didn't happen. Like it's been kind of slow the ramp up, and I think everyone is a little bit surprised by how slow it is. And there's mm -hmm. talk of like summer, fall, etc., oh, yeah. and it keeps moving back and back. Yeah. And so I think everyone is panicking a little bit and understandably so, because there's a lot of people that have been out of work for a while, yeah. but I think it's actually going to get back to where it was in 2019, but not where it was during the pandemic. Cause I think that was actually unnatural. That right. amount of growth that we had at that time was, mm -hmm. was pretty unnatural. So I'm seeing it go back towards where it was like 2018, 2019, where we have a good amount of projects, but not this overabundance of, mm -hmm. of work um, yep. that gets greenlit and greenlit. And mm -hmm. I think we just have to kind of weather this storm a little bit longer before it gets back to kind of normal-ish mm -hmm. levels. And by normal, I mean like 2018, 2019. I don't think mm -hmm. 2020 and 2021 mm -hmm. was normal. I think that was pretty abnormal. Mm -hmm. And, and then of course, like at the same time, we have this, um, like popping up of, of new technology with AI mm -hmm. and, and that caused a lot of fear as well. And, yeah. and understandably so as well. I, I don't quite see it where a lot of other people see it in mm -hmm. terms of like, I don't think it will actually replace people. Um, for me, it kind of starts with like everything kind of starts with law like at this mm -hmm. at this time um a bunch of lawsuits are still being settled a bunch of laws are being made etc mm -hmm. so i think bigger studios it, this is my complete like interpretation mm -hmm. sure, i have yeah. like no <laughs> evidence for this this yeah. is my just picking up yeah. pieces here and there yeah. but i i would think that i'll that a bunch of studios, either from like client side or vendor side, um, would be hesitant to use this technology if the law isn't settled yet, because okay. you don't want to want it to come back and bite of you course, in the yeah. end. Um, and, and yeah, maybe there's like a couple of things here and there where it might be tried or like maneuvered into a way that it could be okay, like with the um, secret invasion title sequence where, okay. where AI was used, but I don't see it being like a case where suddenly it's like, let's make a movie with only AI. I, I just don't see that, um, mm -hmm. purely because of the law not being mm -hmm. settled yet. So I think big companies where the stakes are like in the, in the billions, mm -hmm. I don't think they would, they would risk that at the moment, who knows how it looks and in like five years or so this technology yeah. is accelerating like mm -hmm. crazy so we'll see but i think for the moment mm -hmm. i'm not jumping on the hype wagon just yeah. yet so. yeah no no <laughs> no i mean and as as i remember i think a week ago or two weeks ago i did share um a post on, from instagram from open ai about the, the interior shot um yeah was, yeah and and then you were you were questioning where the motion blur was um and but i mean it looks it looks great it looks i mean obviously what the more you look at it the more you you see things that are wrong but it just it, exactly just, like that that's the thing like it looks to me whenever i look like it was kind of the same as with the promotional videos for for mm -hmm. sora ai when that yeah. first came out like on a first glance to me it looks great mm -hmm. but Coming from like a supervisory point of view, yeah. I I wouldn't approve that. Like to sure. me, it's not yeah. something that I would be like, that is final, mm -hmm. done, mm -hmm. send it. Yeah. Um, and that's where I still feel like the eyes, the eyes of artists will always be needed. I really don't see like I, I just it's really hard to pinpoint what it is exactly, but for me, there's something about something that we make and the effects um 
with with human artists mm -hmm. that have these imperfections that mm -hmm. I think I don't know if if artificial intelligence or machine learning will ever be able to yeah. reproduce that but I mean it's accelerating so so fast it's already so much better than it was a year ago so yeah. I can see it for things like um like like an idea like a mood board or something mm -hmm. to to kind of come up with ideas or like the video that you were sharing for mm -hmm. like architectural purposes yeah. or something like that i think i think when it comes to technology the sense that i've gotten over the last year mm -hmm. is that people kind of tend to forget the bigger picture um it's to me when i look at these things one really big question also um, poses itself for me, which is even if we had um, Sora AI or whatever technology that could make everything look exactly the way that we do it mm -hmm. in VFX, if not better, yeah. or a film, or like you, you put a prompt in and it spits out the sequence that you've, you've wanted. Mm -hmm. My question is, does a filmmaker actually want to make a movie like that? Because mm -hmm. I really don't think they do. And I think yeah. for me, that always kind of comes back to that. And also do audience wants to want to see movies that were made that way. I really don't mm -hmm. think they do. Mm -hmm. I think people are fascinated by how a movie like Jurassic Park came to be or like, sure. and, and that's why I'm like, I think the technology will help in with a lot of processes. I definitely see that uh, with shortening the length of some right. processes or helping artists with some mm -hmm. redundant tasks or repetitive sure. tasks, but I don't see it replacing filmmaking or like the artistry yeah. in the filmmaking process. Because I think if a, if a, if a director is presented by a studio with like, Hey, we want you to use this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how many big name directors would sure, actually yeah. sign up for that because they love filming. Of course, yeah, yeah, so that's, that. that's, that's yeah. kind of what I always come back to. And obviously that can all change in like 10 years, 15 years or so on. But I, I think it's like a bunch of different topics that kind of tie into mm -hmm. AI, a bunch of different questions that tie into AI, which is why I'm not quite panicking yet. Okay. We'll see how it is in a couple yeah. of years. Yeah. But, um, but I see it more as a helper at the moment right. than, than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, similar to my thought. I mean, um, I remember we were talking about it when um, Mid Journey came out. We had, I had a, like a podcast about it and we were discussing it. And we, uh, we, no one had an idea of, of what like that Sora was, was in, the, in the works. Yeah. And it's just, just the pace of, of the evolution of it has just been... Um, crazy it's um, incredibly fast yeah. it's yeah, it's yeah. it's so the speed of it is is incredible with how mm -hmm. it develops but then yeah. i think i think once in a couple of years once we have like once the kind of legal dust okay. settles in the eu and in the us etc yeah. around the globe i don't know if it still will be that fast because okay. i think i think laws were just caught off guard by the speed of this technology. And I do think that, I mean, the EU just put in uh, laws for for AI last, mm -hmm. I think it was last week, okay. uh, that will come into effect. I don't remember, I think 2025, I'm not quite sure. Okay. Um, so don't don't quote me on okay, that. It was it. just, uh, um, but, but like it's, I think it's just that laws are a lot slower than technology. Yeah, course, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, we'll keep seeing this rampant progress, but I think it will, I, I really think it will, the curve will kind of uh, flatten a mm -hmm. little bit once these like lawsuits that are sure. everywhere currently are, are settled and, mm -hmm. and once the laws are, are in place and we actually know all the things that actually go into mm -hmm the machine learning part of, of all of this, the, the, of all these processes. And, and, and I think at that point, probably some processes will change anyways. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's going to be, I, I really think there's going to be a part where, well, either we've opened up Pandora's box and now that's mm -hmm. where we are and the box is open and it'll never close. 
or will contain the contents of the box a little mm -hmm. bit. And I think I see it more that in that case, I, I really see it more that regulations will kind of make studios wonder, okay, is there really a point in us? Because then we have to make sure that every single image that was used to train the mm -hmm. the software that we have the copyrights for yeah, that, perfect. et cetera, et cetera. Is that really worth it more than us paying X amount of artists to, mm -hmm. to do this kind of task? Additionally, yeah. you know, like we all know how, how feedback goes in visual <laughs> yeah. effects. Yeah. So as long as yeah. we get very, very unspecific feedback that mm -hmm. we have to interpret yeah. as humans, yeah. you know, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to get your opinion. Um, I mean, as, as a supervisor, um, based on what you mentioned in terms of the stage that we went through between 2019 and 2022 with the amount of content that was being, I guess, quote unquote, churned out, um, as, as a supervisor, um, as, as well as an artist, um, what, what are your thoughts on, 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 yeah, the, the period that we went through just churning out substance and shows that may have had little substance um, yeah. with, to story or, or, or art. I think, um, I think it's, it's really difficult because I, I'm thankful for the amount mm -hmm. of work that mm -hmm. was there for us. And for me, it helped me grow immensely okay. as an artist. I feel like I had my biggest growth period between like the end of 2019 and like 2022 and obviously I'm still growing like the growth sure. process never ends but I feel like I learned so much in that time period just because of the amount of shows that I was sure. working on that all were asking for so many different things mm -hmm. but at the same time as someone who also loves movies and and tv shows yeah. i i do feel like the quality in story dropped by a lot mm -hmm. and that made me kind of sad because i feel like we i i kind of see that especially the bigger studios um they keep taking away the wrong parts of the message right. like okay. for example uh, it's it's funny because my girlfriend and I we keep bring, we keep going back to this one, but it's kind of like Barbie was insanely successful. Mm -hmm. So the the question should be like, what why was it so successful? Yeah. And it was successful because it touched a lot of women and it spoke to like what it's like to be a woman in this world and like it had a lot of messaging and mm -hmm. and a lot of like. I feel so seen by this movie, but sure. what was taken away was mm -hmm. let's make more toy movies or let's mm -hmm. make Barbie too. Cause Barbie, the first Barbie sure. was super successful. Mm -hmm. And it's this kind of things that I feel like we keep seeing over and over again, where it's like the wrong messages are being taken away from a success. And, and that's what, where I got, where I get sad and frustrated because mm -hmm. I feel like we have, currently such a wide array of talent in mm. um in europe and in hollywood and all across the globe that have such unique stories like i'm, I'm we're watching shogun right now and i love oh, it yeah, I love, so I much it. Yeah, I, think, I... I think it's fantastic mm. and so for me it's like why can't we tell more stories like this like yeah. stories that we haven't seen before like taking a chance on something that we haven't seen before, like yeah. everything everywhere all at once, something that we've yeah. not seen before, like just taking a chance on something that might be like really, really unique. Cause mm -hmm. I do feel like the audiences reward that. Like, I feel yeah. like we've shown it in the last couple of yeah. years that we, as the audience, we reward that, that there's yeah. something new and we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. But when it gets repetitive, I think, I think, um, and especially like, I think superhero movies are like the best case for, for those, for, for, for that growth. It's like, yeah. we were excited about them. We were excited about them. And then it started to be like, okay, but now it's <laughs> starting to be a, like, yeah. almost like homework that I yeah. have to watch all these different shows and movies yeah. to understand what's going on in the main story. Mm -hmm. 
and then it was too much and we were like all right I f like it's kind of getting repetitive now and i can't keep up anymore yeah. i can't watch all of these shows yeah. it's it's too much and and so i think that was expect to me that was like i i felt like i saw that coming in 2016 2015 that at some point this would falter and like people would be tired of it and i think that's kind of where we are now but i'm not sure if it's clicked in studios and like studio heads and management etc yet that what the audiences are interested in is yeah. story mm -hmm. and what we as vfx should be doing is supporting the story and mm -hmm. not to me vfx should always be a supporting cast member to the story not sure. ever the main of point yeah. of the story like it mm -hmm. should be it, i mean there's we have the whole thing with no cgi blah 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 yeah. we all know that that's not true mm -hmm. but to me actually that shows that when we do our job really well mm -hmm. it's so good that people are like this movie was all practical when it's yeah. not we all know that that's not true yeah and that's kind of, unfortunately, it's like kind of counterproductive because we do want to be seen <laughs> yeah. as artists. But I do think that that's kind of where VFX should be. It should mm -hmm. be like an invisible magic in a way to mm -hmm. support the strength of the story. And mm -hmm. I don't feel like we've, I don't, I feel like with a couple of exceptions, I, I don't think we've had a lot of that in the mm -hmm. last couple of years. I think we've, especially from like, Big studios, I think they've been playing it very, very safe in the last yeah. couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I do agree. Um, yeah, I, 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 when you mentioned Shogun, I just, I, I was like, wow, yeah, I'm enjoying it so much, and it's, it's just brilliant. It just, it just makes me imagine just how things were, and just, just the imagery yeah. of it is just, it's just beautiful. And uh, it, I think it's, I think what's, what's what I often go back to, um, my my girlfriend is from Venezuela, and, and we talk about this a lot, that like there is so, 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 so many stories in Latin America alone, sure. like n let alone the rest of the, um, of the world. Mm -hmm. I feel like still the majority of our stories that are in bigger theaters are mm -hmm. like, eurocentric or us centric yeah. and that's kind of all we're getting and i'm interested in more like i i want to yeah. see other stories as well yeah. it's not that doesn't mean that the you know european or us stories haven't like are done being told like there's mm -hmm. obviously always things to to say but i do think that it's very it, it's still like the rest of the world is still very marginalized in movies, yeah. in my opinion. I don't know if that's actually the case when you look at amounts of movies, but in my opinion, at least in my movie theaters, I'm mainly seeing uh, uh, yeah. on the slate of movies, yeah. Eurocentric or US centric movies and same with yeah. TV shows. So I, I would like to see more and different stories that we've not seen yet, like Shogun, for example. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I could go on about it, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, um, but in in terms of um, just your day to day interactions with with other compositors, um, what are you hearing from from them in terms of yeah, what um, what they're thinking and how they feel um, about just just the future of just being a compositor? I mean, do you, yeah, do you think? I mean, like you said, it might we still have a chance, but what are people saying in terms of it being sustainable as being an artist? I think um, I think there's kind of like different topics to unpack. I think mm -hmm. there's like when it comes to something like AI, I do see people kind of falling like in in. Um, Mm, like three categories i think like it's either people saying like ai is fantastic i'm super excited i don't know why people are criticizing it those i feel like are getting mm, less and less because i think those right. were that was a pretty big majority in the beginning yeah. of the of those like especially with mid journey mm -hmm. now i feel like the majority of people kind of fall in one of two places which is i'm i i'm terrified about 
for like about AI and for my job security. I'm uh, I'm scared my job will get taken away. Um, this already looks so good, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then and then um, and then there's the other group which I see myself more in, which is like I do think it poses some risks to some jobs uh, in our industry. It poses risk to a lot of other jobs that that's completely uh we never talk about that enough but it poses a lot of other risks to society and other jobs but in our industry um i do see it posing a risk mm, to especially to like junior level jobs but i don't i really don't see it taking over the industry and completely replacing Mm -hmm. the artists i just really don't see it for the reasons that i said earlier um and and that's why for me i'm not like i'm just letting it like i'm watching it Mm -hmm. i'm aware of what's happening and i'm seeing it more as like well at some point i should probably look at this and learn a couple of things Mm -hmm. in case i need to integrate it somehow into my workflow yeah but um but i'm not worried about sure. about myself or or those around me but mm-hmm. that that being said i'm not a junior level i'm sure. i'm on a supervisor level so mm-hmm. i think i think for people that are just now starting out in the industry i completely understand that it can be really scary because you're seeing this thing pop up and and and, and there's like a corner of the internet that's panicking mm-hmm. and a corner of the internet that's like say goodbye to your jobs <laughs> like you know it's like yeah. it, it, the internet is weird in that mm-hmm. way so i i can really understand that that's scary and i think i would just say like just to continue doing what you're doing because at the moment it's not doing mm-hmm. anything sure it's it's I think studios are actually really hesitant to do anything until mm. the legal parts of it are yeah. settled because they don't want to open themselves up to lawsuits. Mm. And that's where my rationality kind of goes <laughs> back to. And that's why I'm feeling yeah. very Zen about it. Yeah. So that's what I would tell people that are just now kind of starting out in the industry um, to keep like honing your craft and to keep getting better mm-hmm. at what it is that you're doing and trying to move up the ladder and just keep watching what's happening like at the moment we just don't know like we just yeah. it, it to me it's never there's never a point in panicking about something that i don't know what is actually going to do mm-hmm. i can't predict the future and and yeah. neither can any of the other people nor mm-hmm. the tech industry yeah. so they 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 like to say that they can but it's mm-hmm. not that's not the case I actually so, yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah so i i would try to really be zen about it and mm-hmm. not let it affect your mental health because i actually mm-hmm. think it's affecting a lot of people's mental health while yeah. they're working and they see okay. these articles pop up etc yeah. it's like continue to do what you're doing mm. grow as a as a compositor or cg artist or whatever it is that you're doing mm-hmm. um and and just keep moving and keep getting experience on shows etc yeah. and then keep moving moving up the the ladder yeah. and and by then we'll know more mm-hmm. but at the moment there's not really a point for anyone to yeah. to panic just yeah. yet i think yeah okay yeah yeah sure yeah um seeing as obviously i don't use nuke as as much as you do but um how has nuke changed or or upgraded in in, in a way that has made you change your workflow in any way it's <laughs> it's actually not to me it's not changed that much but i'm mm-hmm. also working off of an older version i'm not mm-hmm. we're not working with the newest version of, okay. of nuke which is completely normal at every studio mm-hmm. you don't just sure. obviously you don't just upgrade to the latest version mm-hmm. because of pipeline etc yeah. so for me it's actually kind of been the same uh mm-hmm. as as it has been for the last year ish there have of course been like a couple of tools like the um, the copycat tools and things like mm-hmm. that 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 are helpful for some workflows which are just like also machine learning machine learning tools but i have to 
I have to stay, and I think those that know me know this, and uh, and I think you know this as well. But I am not a person that does nuke after hours. Okay. I'm like done at yep. six. Yep. <laughs> at six o'clock, I yeah. well these days uh, we're kind of in, in crunch time right now, so of these course. days not six sharp, but mm -hmm. I try to, to yeah, keep of course. it close to as close to six as I can. But I I leave. I don't have nuke on my home machine. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have access to sure. um, to any of the software on mm. my on my home workstation, and mm. I I try to kind of keep myself updated with like newest workflows, etc. But I'm also I'm I'm really not someone who sits down and does like tutorials on sure. the weekend, and that's not saying that that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just not me. Yeah, of course. And and um. I think usually for me, it's what how my career has gone. It's like when Nuke upgrades and the studio that I'm working at upgrades, I learn like mm -hmm. whatever's new. Of course. I try to catch up on whatever they shifted around. And now yeah. this is something new. They added this. Now this works better. This one now works worse, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's always this kind of like yeah. changes. Um and and that's how I keep myself updated. I do think that once I get to work more with the latest versions, a lot of things will mm -hmm. change because I know that I think it's 15, uh, new version 15 is pretty different. So okay. I, I am looking forward to um, to doing more with Unreal because we, okay. um, yeah, we, we were doing that a little bit at, at uh, SSVFX. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, if you were aware when we were working on, yeah. on Ahsoka that yeah. there was um, Unreal stuff. And, and just in general, I'm, I'm always super interested with when it comes to Unreal. It's how I spent my, the first wave on, of the pandemic was just oh, yeah. taking Unreal classes just because I, okay. that I was actually interested okay, in. Yeah to learn in my yeah. in my free time and yeah. i know that it's kind of started starting to get integrated into nuke so i'm okay. i'm really interested in mm. in that but then again for me it kind of has to be like does my project that i'm currently working on require it mm -hmm. then i'll learn it sure but i won't learn it yeah. after <laughs> 14 hours yeah and and i i don't know like i feel like the 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 <laughs> industry is split on that there's like yeah, a sure. A bunch of people that are like, you have, you must always yeah. hone your craft, and I do agree with that. Yeah, but I'm always like, only if it's between oh, yeah. nine a.m. and six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's 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 hard work. I mean, as, as I give that as an excuse to myself, just because I'm a parent, but I just, yeah, I struggle to to uh, to 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 just sit down and after hours and learn new things really it's yeah just it's just the the thing is like i think if you're not like as long as you are not someone who's like oh, in 1995 mm. i did it like this yeah. it like and you are open to changing your workflows while you're in a project mm -hmm. then i think it's fine because then you're kind of automatically learning mm. so i think it's okay not to do stuff after hours but yeah. if you are like I'm never changing my workflows because when I started in the industry mm -hmm. 15 years ago, we didn't need this, sure. blah, blah, blah. Then I think, okay, then you're doing a disservice to yourself because mm -hmm. you're kind of actively keeping yourself from growing. Sure. But I, I do think that you can be a really strong artist, a really good lead, a good supervisor within working hours. Sure. I really think that that's possible. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, um, I think it's possible to still learn while you are in a project and sure. not having to stay up until mm. midnight learning new yeah. things etc yeah yeah sure of course yeah um are you able to um share a bit more about your your journey to to where you are currently in just in terms of how you go into the industry and um yeah you're just basically your journey like what made you get into the vfx yeah, industry yeah sure yeah. sure um i was actually <laughs> I studied uh, acting in the U.S., right. <laughs> which is uh, an interesting choice mm. um, that led nowhere. So uh, <laughs> um, I did work a little bit in L.A. at like a, a talent agency. And and so those kinds of jobs like talent agency and, and I worked at a theater for but not as like an actress, but okay. like in the management part, um, those kind of things 
early on taught me a little bit about like leadership and management, mm -hmm. etc. But I never at the time I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. Okay. <clears throat> and then I went to the movies in 2013, I think it was, mm. to see Gravity. Oh, yeah. Which was the movie that made me suddenly okay. aware of what visual effects sure. are and and made me really, like, I, I thought at the time, I haven't seen it in a while, so I don't know mm. how, how well it still holds up, yeah. but I thought at the time that movie was so stunning. Oh, yeah. And so... um I I like went on a deep dive and just mm. started to like read about this like mm -hmm. this art and yeah. and I got super super interested in it and mm -hmm. um and started to like play around with Maya and and things like that but you like you know how it is when you start sure. clicking things it means mm -hmm. nothing you're feeling <laughs> in the beginning yeah and so um I ended up going back to to school to do a master's in the US um, okay. for visual effects and uh, kind of at first I was actually more interested in like um, sims like effects stuff okay. Houdini etc but I don't have the patience for okay. caching times <laughs> yeah. so that's where that ended okay, yeah. for me <laughs> because I thought it was super cool yeah. and I thought it was so interesting and I still have a, a really strong interest for it but I mm -hmm. don't have an I don't have the patience oh, yeah, to sure. wait overnight yeah. for for seeing something, yeah. whether something worked of course, or not. Yeah. So I I ended up kind of switching to compositing and just learning about comp and um and I had like um my first internship that I had was at a small studio in in Germany actually where I worked on the Magnificent Seven, mm -hmm. um, which is a movie in 2016, mm -hmm. and. And yeah, it just kind of started, that kind of started my whole journey. Um, I I worked at The Mill um, and then went back to LA to work at um, like a bunch of Netflix shows at, at Cosa VFX with like uh, working on like Gotham and Lucifer, mm -hmm. like just a bunch of those like like sh shows that at the time at the time pilot season still okay, existed yeah. so yeah. it was yeah. like um you got to work on a lot of like really different projects mm -hmm. um and then i i went to teaneg and then um the pandemic hit in mm -hmm. 2020 and so i had to leave the us uh okay. and come back to to germany and that's when when i worked at trickster and i think that's where you and i first met if i remember correctly no was it i don't remember it was where, at where, where, vfx i think wasn't it did you but were you not a trickster I was, in 2021 yeah. uh i may have been yeah I, but i don't i oh, yeah of course yeah you're right yes you're right yeah. I think weren't you were you on Shang Chi? I don't remember yeah, I was, you yeah. were. Okay, I was, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. So we weren't on the same project, but we were yeah. in the same company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, I was at Tracer for a long time and still mm -hmm. like occasionally I would stop working for Tracer for like yeah. a few months and go to another company and then go back to Tracer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then work at another company, mm. go back to Tracer. Yeah. So the majority of my time in Europe oh, yeah. I was at Trickster. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, yeah. and then like, of course, like last year we had the strikes that, that, yeah. um, really halted, uh, everything mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah. But, um, but I found myself super fortunate in, um, that Pixelmondo was looking for a comp supervisor for a project that I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I started working on and, and I'm still working on, oh, yeah, <laughs> so sure, we'll yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. Um, and who knows you know hopefully mm -hmm. hopefully soon we'll see we'll see yeah. more projects picking up across yeah. across the continent again yeah for sure yeah well it's been, yeah it's been great um it's been great um I, yeah there's always so much things to talk about but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm sure if people have questions they'll they'll find you somewhere and <laughs> yeah yeah you can you. always find me ranting about everything on on linkedin no. telling people that work-life balance is really oh, yeah. important it is yeah it is it is but yeah I think i've kind of become known for just saying that over and over again <laughs> it is it's, uh, it's great that you you're championing that because we need it and i mean it's funny because i had i was asked um by a student in america last week um because he was do he's doing a dissertation about a burnout in the industry because he's looking yeah. to get into the industry and he 
invited me um to to share my mind on on my experience and thoughts so. it's a real problem it's a real real yeah. problem that i don't think gets talked about enough mm. and i think uh one thing if if you'll let if you'll indulge me a couple more minutes yeah for sure yeah. tangent yeah um one thing that i've noticed in our industry is that we treat the burnout that all of us have at some point i think experienced uh from long hours from difficult projects uh etc cetera, etc cetera. we kind of treat it as a um, that's so nice to joke about mm -hmm. or like it's like a ah but when i was on this oh, i yeah. worked until 2 a.m <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's like i think that is not right mm -hmm. at all like i think that's that is a problem that i've seen so much mm -hmm. in our industry and i don't think that that's the correct way to approach yeah. the burn the burnout rate yeah. that is kind of that like actually burning through the yeah. through yeah. the vfx industry yeah. because i think it's a really serious topic and i don't think it's something to be joked about mm -hmm. and i definitely don't think it's something to wear as a badge of honor oh, yeah, of that you've worked yeah. until 2 a.m or yeah. whatever i think that mm -hmm. that's that's a problem mm -hmm. like that's that shows that mm, there is something that went wrong. Why would yeah. someone have to work until 2 a.m.? Yeah, something yeah. went wrong in the project. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should look at. Yeah. Like, why is it that there was people, that there were people okay, that yeah. had to work so long or yeah. that, that had to take two months off mm -hmm. after that project because they were so burnt out? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of questions that I feel like are, like we're starting to ask, but I, I still think are not being asked yeah, enough. Right. And I definitely do think people need to stop wearing this like long hours as a badge of honor yeah. of, ah, but when I was doing this, mm -hmm. I was working 18 hours and sleeping in the office. Yeah. To me, those are like, that is wild yeah. to hear yeah. those kind of kinds of yeah. things. But yeah, yeah, be, yeah. I think it'll be, it'll be great if I do have a, an, a podcast on that topic, it'll be yeah. great to have you on because I've heard of a lot of really bad stories and just tragedy tragedies unfortunately yeah happens. and and i think i think there was a study a couple of years ago um in the uk specifically that was showing that mm -hmm. the highest rate of um percentage of depression just across right. the board was happening in post-production right. uh in the post-production mm -hmm. industry which i think considering that we have trauma doctors police officers mm -hmm. firefighters all of these really really tough jobs that actually have you go face to face mm -hmm. with um with real trauma i think that is super wild that the yeah. highest rate of depression is yeah. in post production yeah. i think it's it's something that should be investigated and looked at for sure yeah for sure yeah yeah i agree I agree well, that positive note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's, but it's getting better. I think it, people are are starting to set boundaries more yeah. and more. I'm seeing it more, so I think it's good. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, but thank yeah, thank you so much for for your time and your honesty and just yeah, your, for sure. Your, your... It was super fun. I had a great yeah. time. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much.